Bienvenidos a Colombian Accents. Welcome. Bienvenidos. Very good. Let's go. Hi, John. How you doing? It's nice to see you again, man. You too, man. How's everything? It's good. It's good. Uh, working, trying to trying to do things different, and uh, you know, thank you for being here and talking to us on on Colombian accents. Appreciate it. No, thank you for inviting me, man. Thank you for inviting me. Awesome. For the audience, tell tell us a bit about yourself, who you are, and and what you do, please. All right. Yeah. My name is John Alexander Ospina. I've been a teacher for the past, I would say, eleven years and something, a little bit more than that. But I've been an English teacher, and right now I'm running the uh, the English department of Liceo Pino Verde. And for the past three years, I've been the leader of the such this part department, and it's um, a very good experience. Um, I, I love what I do. That's uh, basically my I found that is my pa my passion to be teaching. So I'm pretty happy to uh, to be part of this uh, this particular environment, which is teaching. So you work at a private school, is that right? That is correct. Cool, yeah. cool, cool. So let's go back a little bit in time. Let's say uh, two months ago or whenever this, you know, the pandemic crisis started. And yeah. uh, I'm sure it must have caught you off guard like everybody else. Uh, right. Can you walk us through a little bit of what were some of the biggest challenges that you had to face back then? How you dealt with them? And most importantly, uh, what did you what did you learn from it? And, and, you know, that you can share with us, please. Well, to start with, man, I got to say that it, it was kind of a movie. It was quite like a movie. You, you don't expect this kinds of situations to happen in real life, right? So you, you kind of, uh-uh, this is not true. I got to wake up from this nightmare. <laughs> But then all of a sudden, you, you, you realize that is true. That is true, that this situation is really happening. And you're like, but, but, but this is impossible. This only happens in movies. And boom, all of a sudden, just, you know, happens in real life, happens to you. So what was like the worst thing at the beginning? What, what really, you know, like, oh my God, this is insane. Well, how am I going to deal with it? As I told you, it's been a process. We started like, okay, should I give our students like, you know, a minimum amount of work? And then, no, no, no. What about if we give, we give them like a good amount of work so they can work through the entire week? Uh, should, should we send them activities and then a, uh, a week later uh, we can uh, we we, um, we ask them like how, how was it or should, should we do like live sessions with them every single so we started like uh, trying like different strategies come up with different strategies in order to um to accomplish what we want to accomplish but you know it's been um it's been tough It's been tough, but as I told you before, uh, by trying different alternatives, then we uh, we're trying to um, to get everything together, right, and to come up with something good that is beneficial for them and is beneficial for us as teachers as well. So that's basically what what we're trying to do because we're still trying. Um, what can you share with us? One thing that you have learned from this from this experience, something that you know you were not prepared for, but you had to do, and then eventually you said, "Huh." Now we can do it this mm -hmm. way. Is there mm -hmm. one thing that you can share with us, please, John? Virtual environment is where we're heading. Okay? Uh, right now, you know, in school we have, we have a program, okay? Which is a virtual program for those students that they practice some sport and they're, 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 they're basically athletes, okay? And we use this virtual environment for these students. Okay, in order for them to accomplish their objectives, okay, to prepare them for st standardized exams and to prepare them for life, okay, and they're not present in school. So from here is something that that we are learning that this is basically what's going to be in the future. We're going to have the majority of our students uh, doing virtual environment, um, you know, academic progress. That's basically what I'm learning, that it, we have to start building, uh, we have to start fixing, accommodating our, our curriculum into this particular situations, because we're going to have in the future probably students that are not going to be able to be, to have one-on-one -on -one class, and, and they're going to use this as a very, a very good strategy in order for them to increase as, as a professional and also as a person, as a, as a person. so this is what This is still teaching me, okay? Not taught me, but, you know, still teaching me, you know, that this is where we're heading. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Now, let me ask you this. Um, do you think people are being overworked 
these days? Are you being overworked <laughs> these days? Do you think your staff is being overworked definitely, these days? Definitely, man. Uh, yeah. Too much screen time? Yeah, what definitely. do you think? What's your, what's your, definitely, what, what, because yeah. I'm waking up at, let me say, like around 6 a.m. in the morning, right? And from then on, boom, computer. It's just computer and me. You know, we got to grade things. Uh, we got to pay, uh, pay attention to the students' inquiries, questions, duties, um, doubts. Uh, so it's basically like uh, for me and for the, uh, I would say for all the teachers from the school and from all the schools, it's been a little bit more overwhelmed that, than before. What do you think on, on public schools? What, is, what they're doing? Do you know what they're doing? Have they, have they reached out to you, you guys? Know, it, it's, have it's, you uh, shared with them in any way? For, uh, I have please. to say that this, that's a very tough situation because um, I, some of the students, and um, I'm, I'm from a personal experience, from many uh, uh, teenagers that I know, children that I know. I mean, the, some of them, they don't even have internet in their houses, right? So in this case, it's tough for them to, uh, to deal with this type of, um, of education because it's, it's virtual, virtual. And for them, it's tough. It's very, very tough. It's been tough. Uh, they always have to go to some, somebody else's house in order to, uh, to work on their homework, on their duties, whatever. And... I think that's the number one thing. I mean, that's the number one, the number one issue that they're facing nowadays. That not everybody has the same opportunities as the majority of the uh, private school uh, students have. So I would say that's an issue. That's a very, very strong issue. And and yeah, that's basically it. I have to say that. And for the teachers, and and for the teachers, the amount of students that they have to work with. I mean, that they have to deal with is so many, so many students. And and not going so far. You know, all the students, they learned differently, right? And, and we're using just one, one method, which is basically this screen, okay? And that's the only resource that we have. How are we going to be able to help them out, right? If, if, if the only thing that is going, to, is going to keep us connected is electronic devices, computers, that's all, internet, right? It's very, very tough to help students with special needs that's number one thing i also have to say there we're gonna go on to a new second life i guess How, did you ever play second life or not play did you were you ever into second no, life not at all <laughs> no. no check it out i think i i think it's still a thing mm -hmm. uh if you could I check will. it out it's uh, it's interesting second life is a is a virtual world it's it's as old as the I don't know like, like twenty years maybe maybe I don't know I don't know maybe not that long but it's been around for a while and uh, yeah I, I figure that's where we're heading we're heading into a virtual world where everything is going to be mm -hmm. online and you know we're getting used to it now how effective do you think uh, distance learning and you know virtual learning environments mm -hmm. are are the kids learning we have to take something positive out of this situation, okay, the situation that we're facing nowadays, that, that, you know, we're not ready for this now, but it's a chance for us to start implementing uh, and to start thinking about what do we need to do in order to accomplish this particular situations, okay? So, if we, this is where we're actually uh, heading, well, let me tell you, this, if this is where we're actually heading, this is a starting point. This is a, a very good starting point for us to think about. Okay, we have to start doing something, okay, in order to uh, to increment the possibilities for everybody to be having uh, a, a virtual classroom, okay, to have a virtual class. This is the best time, okay. And and, and look, is it, it made us think? It's making us think that yes, we need this. We actually need this, and, and, and we need it fast because we need we we got, we got to bring our teaching to every single part of the world, and, and and to start with in our country, Colombia. So so we have to start. You know, everything that we're doing nowadays is um is um is an experience for our, for us to um to uh, to start thinking. Okay, if this is what we need, okay. We should start collecting information. We should start, if this is, for example, the classes that we have in our students, we should record them, right? And we should keep them on a, on a folder. That's going to help us out in the future. So, yeah, this is where we're heading. This is definitely where we're heading. And this is something that we start thinking, that we need to start thinking about. Everybody, everybody as a, you know, as a community. 
Okay. Um, you also mentioned something, and I'm wondering mm -hmm. assessment. How are you dealing with assessment this year? Are you guys being flexible about it? Are you having discussions about it? What's your policy or what's your, what's your opinion about how assessment should be looked at this year? You mentioned something there very important that we need to be flexible, okay? As soon as this situation started, that's the number one thing that, that came to our head. We need to be flexible, once again, because um, this is the first time for, for us dealing with this kinds of with this type of situation so we need to be flexible whatsoever we need to we need to 100 percent yeah yeah i'm sure it's a complex issue and i'm sure you guys are still trying to figure it out just like anybody else yeah thank you for sharing john i know i know there's a lot going on also you know a few years ago i was asked by a dear good friend of mine she asked me julian what do you think do you think that uh, someday we're going to be replaced by in AI or you know by computers by, by uh, technology and I remember I remember saying back then uh, now you know teachers will not be replaced by technology but there will be new teachers doing new jobs that have to do with technology so my question is John uh, you know having seen all of this what is just starting because it seems to me that we're just starting a new mm -hmm. era and, and uh, new things are happening mm -hmm. pretty much every yeah. day Uh, do you guys ever talk about job security? Is that something that you, that you guys think about and go, oh my God, we're not going to have enough students or the parents are not going to be there? I don't know. Is that something that is in your concern, job security <laughs> for the future or not really? Mm -hmm. um, as I told you before, you know, um, we all learning from this experience, okay? But some people, they take it negatively, okay? And But we need to take The good thing out of, about this, I you know we're facing a very difficult situation. Uh, uh, the income is going down. A lot of a lot of the economy is also going down. A lot of things are are are, are being affected by this situation, right? And and just you know, and some of the uh, the parents are are also concerned about their students and the children education. And some of them are even taking their students out of school because you know because this is something that. Uh, nobody expected. Uh, parents are not able to uh, to pay the uh, the money that some students are are you know they they, they pay for 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 the uh, the students um um studying, but it's always been a uh, something in your head. So, so that is always something that is on your head. I mean that situation. That situation was always being your head. You don't know what's going to happen. Uh, you don't know if if, if, if uh, you know we're gonna be with this for the end for the rest of the year. Probably starting next year we're gonna be facing with this situation. What's going to happen with the uh, you know between you and I this uh, the uh, the money you know the uh, <laughs> the payment all of that. So you know it's, it's a bunch of questions that go into your head that only time will tell. So now changing here a little bit the topic, John. You know, when you're sitting alone, reading, reading a book, not a textbook, but something else, or I don't know, listening to music or whatever it is that you do to relax a bit, and then you start thinking about the world, and you go, oh my God, is this real, you know, or is this just a hoax, or nah, they know what they're doing, they're just, well, what comes to your mind, bro, is, this, is that something that, you know, it's on your head? Wow, but yeah, it is on my head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is, you know what the thing is that, Uh, so uh, many people say that is uh, a, a conspiracy from from the government. Some people say that is true. I mean, so it's, 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 you know, it's like who to believe? <laughs> who to believe? Like what? Okay, what's you know who who's right here? I mean, but honestly, honestly, wow, it's a tough question. Do you watch the news? <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. I do. But let me tell you, just uh, I will say like um, one one time every two days. Right, because it's always the same thing, always the same thing, and and you know that 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 frustrates you a, bit, a little bit more. So watching the news so constantly, for me, it's been frustrating. You know, it's it's a bunch of things. So so you know that always like you know um, plays with your mind a little bit. Okay, so I would say like I watch it like every two days. Um, now answering your question, well, <laughs> tough, 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 tough. But honestly, wow, I go more into the uh, conspiracy part. Yeah, I think that this is more into the, um, I don't know, they have to do something with this, honestly. 
they have to do something with this. Um, that's my, my opinion. It's I think that, you know, it's easy to think that way when you watch the yeah, movie. Yeah. yeah, it's easy to think that way. And another thing is that, I mean, like when this situation ha started happening, uh, the rest of the other news, you don't hear them that, that, that often. You know, the wars against the prop, the economical problems with, between this country and the other, the, the, uh, the problem in Venezuela, the problem in, uh, in, in Europe, so many things. I mean, so many things that before the situation happened, you don't hear them anymore <laughs> or not that much. Okay, so, so I think they have to do something with this situation. Who knows? We, we will see. Yeah, exactly. Who knows? Or probably we won't. We won't be able to know. Nah, it's important just to be safe and uh, yeah, that's you true. know, that's use true. common sense, man. And yeah, yeah. I guess do not expose yourself. Uh, as they would say here in Colombia, do not give papaya. <laughs> John, thank you again. Thank you so much for being here with us. And uh, you have a good one, bro. Be safe oh, out you. there. Uh, make sure that, that you wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs> and your face. <laughs> yeah. You to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't touch your face. Yeah, no. yeah, no, thank you. Thank you, Julian, for inviting me. It's a great opportunity for us to, uh, to, to express ourselves. And that every, this is a community, and we have to learn from each other. So I think it's, it's something amazing what you're doing, Julian. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you for sharing.